Hey everybody, it's Bo. Kilo Hotel 7 Foxtrot Charlie. In my last video, I was out doing a POTA activation and I was testing this here battery. Well, I wasn't 100% sure what all uh, amount of power was being used with it. So I ordered this here watt meter off of Amazon for 16 bucks. So now we're gonna talk about how to put on some Anderson power poles. If you've never seen these before, they're a four piece construction. You can do uh, red and black and they have these little clips. There's a little spring inside of there. And then there's these little fingers. I call them fingers. I don't know what they're actually called, but uh, you have to put these on the wires that are on the watt meter. So I'm going to talk about how to do that, how to put the Anderson power poles onto these wires without using the Anderson power poles uh, attachment or uh, uh, pair of pliers, whatever uh, you know the actual name for them are. I can't think of it right at the moment. But I'm going to be using these here multi-tool type of uh, wire strippers and pliers. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. I'm going to change my camera view just a little bit and we'll get started. All right, so the Anderson power poles that I bought come in this nifty little case. Got it on Amazon. I'll post the description or the uh, link in the below, but they come in this here case like this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to attach these Anderson power poles to this watt meter. Now you might be saying, what does a watt meter matter? All right, so it has a source and a load on it. And what it does is, is if you put it in line with your battery, it will show you exactly how much power you've used from that battery. So the next thing that I'm going to do is, is I'm going to run the same experiment uh, with the uh, watt meter in place. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the ends here just because they're rather large and I don't think they're going to fit through the Anderson power pole. And then the next thing I'm going to do is, is this is a 12 gauge. So I'm going to pick the 12 gauge spot on this pair of uh, strippers. I'm going to strip it out. Uh, actually, you know what? I should measure it out first. So you want to see exactly how much of the power pole or how much wire you need. And do is mark it with my finger and then I'm going to grab it and strip it up. That was pretty easy. And then kind of braid it up a little bit and then stick it through the power pole little finger thing here. Oh, that's not working very well. Right. that's not working very well so uh, I think what we're gonna do is, is we're going to get a small uh, jeweler screwdriver and bend this out just a little bit give it just a second <clears throat> all right so uh, off camera I figured out that I only needed to cut a little bit more wire or uh, plastic off of the wire so that's what we did anyways so moving on what we're gonna do is is we're gonna take the uh, tw 10 to 24 hole that's on these here uh, pliers we're gonna stick the power pole through it and we're going to crimp it like we would anything else so crimp that down move a little bit crimp it again and then move back over here to where the end of it is I don't know if you can see that but I'll show you that in just a second um, and then that down too. All right. So is it easier to to get the Anderson power poles connectors? Sure. Or the, the crimpers for it? Absolutely. But if you are like me, 
I figured I could just do it this way and I wouldn't have to uh, worry about paying $30 for a set of pliers that were only really useful for one thing. Um, I'm very into making things work for multiple different things, so I didn't want to uh, to do it that way. But I got that crimped on there, give it a little tug, and it looks to be good. Then do the other one. Do the same thing. Tighten that down, or crimp that down. Crimp it down a little more. And then what I do is, is I will take this here and round out the top like so and give it a little tug and it's good to go all right so the tricky uh part about doing this is these anderson power poles so now what you want to do is you have to take that finger right here right and you have to get it over the little spring that's in here uh let's see if you can see that nope hmm let's see All right, get it in the spring. Uh, you should be able to see that little spring right there. So you just take it, slide it in, and uh, push it on. If you look inside, it's not exactly that great. Push it in, you hear that click, you're good to go. Take the black one, or the negative one, whatever term you want to use, and then do the same thing. Push her on. And here's a little click. Come on. Sometimes you have to push it a little bit from the inside with a little bit of a screwdriver to get her in, to get it in there. And this one, of course, doing it for video, doesn't want to play right. smaller poker <clears throat> let me just go on the back side here give it a little push there you go I heard the little click I don't know if you did so those are those two all right and then I'll do these two and then we'll come back in just a second So I almost promise you, maybe not promise, promise might be a strong word, but I can say that for me, using these Anderson power poles, I've done a few of them and I've gotten better at it each time that I do it. And that one went, see, that one just needs a little bit of help, just like that last one did. Seems the wire for the positive is a little bit, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? I was a little more, um, little less malleable, I guess. See how that, yeah, it flexes a little bit, but this one flexes a lot more. So there we go. We got our Anderson power poles on our power meter or our watt meter rather. And uh, now all we have to do is plug it in to the source side. Oh, the other really cool thing about these is see how they're just kind of hanging out. You can uh, turn it over a little bit and match them up and then just slide them on. See how it has this little indention right here? And then it has an any. Let's see. It has an any and it has an outy. <laughs> uh, and you just Hook them up where you need them. And then, yeah. Just slide them into each other. Come on. And there you go. And then, the, the, they won't lock into place. Um, I think there is a little piece of metal that you can stick right in between, and that will lock them into place. Uh, but my kit that I bought does not have that piece of metal. But, uh, next thing is, is you plug your battery into your source 
and boom, your watt meter comes on. And it shows you right now, there is 12.838281. Uh, wonder why that's doing that. Maybe because it's a sleigh. Ooh, we'll plug it in in just a second to the, uh, to the other thing that I got. But anyways, it shows you the current reading of your battery. Let's, uh, let's grab this other battery that I acquired since the other day. Um, <clears throat> I use this BioInno. I used the BioInno 1212 Alpha the other day uh, while I was doing another activation. I'll, I'll probably do a video on that uh, a little later, or I'm going to do another video where I have this watt meter plugged in. But uh, <clears throat> I ran this battery for... Um, about four hours at 50 watts and it worked f f flawlessly all right so this battery right now is charged to and it keeps bouncing around a little bit too so i'll have to figure out uh why it is doing that hmm. if you know the answer put it in the comments below uh, but as you can see the bioinno is at 13.74 and it's bouncing a little bit, but it's not bouncing very much. But uh, in the next video, we'll hook it up to a, a radio and we'll see what our results are. We'll run it uh, run it to dead again on the, uh, the tree life and we'll see what happens. Anyways, uh, thanks a lot, guys, for joining me. If you could uh, hit the like and subscribe buttons, that would be awesome. And this is Kilo Hotel 7, Foxtrot Charlie, and I'll be QRT.